Hello and welcome to this new video. Today we're going to explore how to create this kind of effects inside Blender viewport. The Ethanol Circus Anime Effect. So right before starting, I wanted to say thanks to the entire Blender community because in one way or another, they create a lot of uh, important add-ons for your work. Camera add-on, Shakeify, which brought a lot of the action inside the camera through the presets that it has. Another a Blender add-on that I use, it's called Enrich, and you can find that in the Blender market. And what it does is that you can apply filters directly into the render result so it's completely mind-blowing to see something like this directly render on the viewport and have such amazing feedback and everything you do now that has been constructed reacts accordingly and it works fantastically now Please bear in mind, this was done under one hour. I didn't have like two or three days to do this. I just grabbed the, the airship and textured it, rearranged some of the things that needed to be arranged inside the scene. I set up some uh, previous materials uh, and meshes that I had. This was a speed run project actually, just to test how Blender could deal with this kind of situations using geometry nodes. Before starting, we're going to reference one of the most iconic scenes in anime, which is this rescue scene from Brick Hunter to Min Mei when she's falling from the jet. And this scene corresponds to Robotech, which aired in America in 1985. You can basically say that my love and admiration for anime action scenes came from this technique and not this girl pilot, which we will cover in another video. But anyways, this video is a big thank you, Mr. Itano, for creating and inspiring stunning action scenes in every anime age of production. Okay, with that short introduction, please pay attention to what the arrows are pointing because these things are important and we are going to consider them in the production. Quick disclaimer, Blender is free, free forever, so go to download Blender and get the latest version from the daily experimental downloads, which is going to be the 3.0 alpha at this stage of the year. So you can then go to preferences, go to interface, activate developer extras, and then this little button will appear on experimental. Please check on geometry nodes legacy because our file is going to use um, one over two nodes from the previous version. So in the case that you have the current version of Blender, this is what is going to happen. You're going to open your file on Blender 293.5, and then you're going to get that grid all the way in the background. So where are my missiles, Mr. Schiller? Uh -uh, this is the wrong version. You should not open this file with this version of Blender. Instead, go and download Blender 3.0 alpha and that is the correct version for your file to open again and this time you're going to see that everything renders out correctly you can switch to the render result window up here and you can even scroll the timeline so you can see your marvelous missiles attacks and if you press F12 you're going to get the rendered viewport right here down here you're going to find all of the notes that make the compositor possible for all of these effects that is great. So here we have them. The geometry nodes that you see right here for this um, Itano Circus effect was created by Arendelle. So right here, I named it Geometry Nodes Itano Circus. And you can see all the parameters that compose this entire node 3. And I've commented in some of them, uh, actually in all of them, so that you can um, create an idea of what you can expect from these nodes but we're going to do just a proof of concept which means this video is not perfect but just wanted to show you what's possible within 
Blender at the moment. So there is a video link for the two hour session that we all had with Erindale while he was creating the effect with the geometry nodes and this is my workflow in Blender, specifically my workflow which corresponds to animation, shading and the camera as well to prepare the, the settings for everything that we were going to do later on in the video but I just wanted to quickly show you this process because you might think you know what did you do Mr. Schiller I mean the, uh, the whole thing the whole effect falls upon the geometry nodes setup no it doesn't it works as a team so um, these missiles truly were modeled by Erin but I created the shader that was going to be used inside the if we can call it simulation or rather the setup for the scene but this is just a quick snap so that you can see the process which lasted around one hour and such minutes. Okay, this video is kind of long and this specific file will be available for all the patrons. Since it took a lot of time to create the effect itself, I'll be explaining this in this video. But overall, you're going to get the free file which is only the, the missiles and nothing else. But if you want this specific file with the airship and stuff, you can get it from my Patreon. So without further ado, let's go into details as how this works. First of all, this file was provided by Arendelle, uh, which has a fantastic recent course on how to create um, architectural designs using Blender, but specifically addressed with the Svertshock uh, module this Virchok add-on so check it out and he was kind enough to resolve this uh, big issue that I was having to create this this uh, effect as a matter of fact he took two hours of his work I will not be showing the entire process uh, because it's a longer video but I can show you right here on the Camstasia capture all that he created so I'm going to be quickly walking you through what he did so we first started in the uh, discord session to create points emitted from a grid from that from there we faced a challenge to uh, determine which position they had a long uh, curve and we then multiplied the different um, curves that we generated that he generated actually and started to smooth them and identifying them so that he can you know start orientating the possible rockets that we would have at the end so once that was done by creating the curves ID he proceeded then to um, mesh it and make it and give it a thickness once that was done and it was time to identify which position the rockets would have regarding their uh, curves and we and he also added noise to the curves and again this is a two hour uh, tutorial well most likely that it was a extensive walkthrough and blender crashed the file was lost then he recreated back in just six minutes because we already knew where to go he already knew where to go and from there on we um, stylize the actual path some more by adding random noise and he also tried this uh, if any blender developer is watching there's a, a, a huge bug when you use volume mesh to volume uh, within generated uh, procedural curves and assign them a volume shader blender crashes but I wanted to show this because it was pretty amazing when once he shaded the, the path curves this was the marvelous look on um, cycles and I must add that it was an immediate render the volume didn't even take that long to render but it crashed Blender consistently so if any uh, Blender developer is watching this will be a huge issue to resolve another issue that we came across was the correct identification to uh, each generated curve because the biggest challenge was to uh, tell Blender through geometry nodes please identify each individual curves 
as individual objects and not just one object generated from a grid, which in this case is what he did. So once that was found out, like um, later he offset these positions and then started to trim the curve so that it will be completed along the profile or in this case the length of the curve. Now all of this he did and he was uh, very nice to to recreate this from scratch after the, the crash. So the entire thing that you're going to see right now in this video it's about uh, commenting the nodes, the geometry nodes that he did that, because as you see here there's nothing that can tell you what he was um, going to do with the procedure how he came to this because I, I saw um, his post on one of the social media channels and one of the uh, artists that was watching this asked how do you come up with all of these notes? How do you know how to solve these things? And it was a very important question. Again, here we see more Blender crashing. And I've just um, reviewed this in five minutes from a two hour, two hour and yeah, two hours exactly as you can see here, a two hour long session. So thank you so much, Erin. This is a great uh, support for the entire community. So what we did here, and this is the thing, you're going to be getting this file again uh, for free, absolute, absolutely free, no problem with that. Um, but this is a specific file with the one, the one with the airship and all of these other additional things took me around two hours and something. You can see the time lapse while I'm explaining all of this and let's walk through the nodes okay so first of all if you don't know what geometry nodes is let me just quickly summarize it in the following um, if you have no background on procedural generation for assets in any 3d package what procedural modeling does is to take uh, inputs of numbers inputs of coordinates inputs of properties inputs of uh, how the mesh is created and then I'll put it into the viewport okay so in that sense it has been added here into blender as a modifier so everything you do to create something with geometry nodes is going to always be added as a modifier so you select in this case um, Erin started from let me see if I can find it I think it's uh, here we go he took a grid but in soft image eyes for example we can shift a mesh add empty that empty is treated as a geometry but it does not have any kind of properties or coordinates it just exists as the object ID or the object uh, data block in this case in blender language so taking a plane it could have been a cone it could have been any other shape that can distribute faces evenly along a surface and from there on he added the modifier which is called geometry nodes so this is the modifier as and as any modifier you have different parameters so you can set and fix your desired look so let's walk quickly through this because we've taken a lot of time already I hope you have liked the intro video <laughs> it was done to make this more appealing more interesting okay so all of these comments were not here I hope that Erin does not kill me because I tried to comment all of the notes as best as I could so I'm going to walk you through this I find out that to learn geometry nodes in this case as it took me to learn Nuke, Flame, Lustre, um, Ice, PF Track, and many other softwares that use nodes. I found out that whenever you ask the right questions, you tend to find the right node to solve you for the answer. So if you are in geometry nodes, you can come here to add, and then you will find a lot of categories that will encompass all of the nodes that each of these 
specific functions do. Like for example, if we are going to talk about curves, we have all of these properties, all of these uh, categories, all of these attributes, all of these identifications, how you find that curve inside the geometry node. So we have a group input and then we have a group output. Whatever happens in the middle, namely all of these nodes, it's going to alter and modify whatever geometry you create. So you can start from a cone, a plane, anything that is a mesh, okay? And then you can transform or give new attributes or new properties to that mesh. With that explanation, two minute explanation, let's get into this. So how many rockets are we going to define from the grid that we created? So this is going to tell you by using this density parameter, how many rockets are going to be created. Now, the actual beauty of using geometry nodes is that you can plot this parameter, this density parameter, let me say it first, because we're working with a beta version. This is not Blender 3 final version. If by any means you are up to this point in the video, please know that in the future, a lot of things regarding geometry nodes will change so I will appreciate it if you do not comment that this is outdated because it's rapidly changing as a matter of fact so let's go back here how many rockets are defined I mean, you want to define this out here you don't want to come here and then go to the geometry node editor navigate through all of these nodes and then come to this place and then finally tweak this thing no what you want to do is to take this th density directly and plug it into the next available empty port. Now we need to edit that port because it was exposed out here where it says density. Please don't pay attention to this factor right now. Um, this was done for another purpose. Anyways, density, so it's right there. And just like any other node, if you press N, you're going to come to the properties of the geometry node and then you can come here into group. In the group tab, you can change the density attribute for density for the rockets, for rockets. So now you know that the density for the rockets can be incremented or decreased because you have a, a number here. So let's say that I don't want that many rockets on the screen at the moment, although it looks so cool. But let's just say that the art direction, art director, sorry came and asked you to change that. It's too many missiles. Let's reduce it to the middle, 0.5, and then you get less rockets, okay? Even from the point of, of start to the point of end. So that means that you're uh, driving this density basically with this parameter. That's the beauty of the geometry nodes. You can create parameters to be exposed and later on modify them. I'm going slow because I really want you to get the concept because there are a lot of people who really want to know and try and use geometry nodes right now in Blender. But let me just tell you that as of October 18th, 2021, uh, it is going to, Blender is going through a lot of changes and updates to make the nodes better. So it is possible that this version will not work on future uh, releases or that it might do actually because they have legacy support but in either case you already know how you can think to create these nodes and that's what that's the takeaway on this so let's go back the density for the rockets can now be multiplied or let's say we want the double of what we had before then <laughs> you have a gazillion uh, miss missiles here now the cool effect is that now Blender in real time can calculate the depth of field much better than its pre uh, preceding versions. So if you select a camera, you come here to the properties of the camera, you can check off the depth of field and then you will have everything in focus. Now of course this shader again was done in a rush and it is not perfect but you can change that. So if you select all of, all of the all of the rockets and then you come to the material you can see that you have a two rocket smoke and then you can switch here to the shader editor and start editing anything you want the color let me see it's over here 
the anything you want the color or um, the look and feel I just put a noise texture and since I knew it, it was going to be a fast moving camera I was not worried about the look itself so let's go back to geometry notes and let's continue with the walkthrough on these notes I'm going to be hurrying up because this video is kind of long so again let's go back to the modifiers where we have the geometry notes and the density for the rockets is just too much let's go back to 0 0.5 I don't want them to fill the screen and also let's select the camera and activate the depth of field so it is not taxing please get it together if you're coming from another software uh, I don't want to say names but you don't get this in real time in some other softwares the real time um, bokeh effect is present in blender and that's the beauty of working with these things again the smoke effect back here was taken from my previous tutorial on the Annie attack on Titan tutorial that you can also get on my patreon so again I just took that uh, smoke file append and then I imported it into its own collection. I switched some of the properties and now we have this beautiful result instantly. Of course it's not perfect but I just wanted to put some kind of uh, stylized smoke back from the plane. Alright, so we have a grid and from that grid we're going to generate points. Those points have a density. That density has been exposed out here just by click uh, just by connecting the density parameter into an empty socket from the group input that way you can change the parameters from out here instead of diving into geometry nodes now how many times it will branch so Aaron did a uh, branching that you could see in the video if you play back that looks like a thunder so this count allows the branching of that line to exactly like a three separate itself so the more number it has here the more branches it creates so we're going to branch this twice once when they leave the empty and the second time when they are nearing the end but you can change this number to whatever you like so I've even seen that there are some Itano circus that have very straight lines and that was our case as well but um, Aaron smoothed the lines along the curve in some of the nodes that I have that we have right here so this is the smooth the represented trajectory matches from the line branch up until this point if I place zero you can see that the the line is just a straight line there is no way to branch it because there are no subdivisions on that branch um, I, 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 I deem it necessary to <laughs> to show you what I mean that's the branch see that uh, let me see if I can get a better okay here we go you see that that's the representation of the curves after the smoothing let me see if I can find before the uh, there we go so you can see it right there that's the origin point the empty and now it's branching and it's uh, it needs to have a smooth uh, way to be represented so that's what this part does it's smooth the represented tra trajectory meshes from the line branch let's go back to three as it was before so now you can see that each branch each line is subdivided okay so it's there it's subdividing uh, from this point to all the way to that point thank you so much if you have been here with this video I know it's kind of long but please uh, you're gonna get it all together so after that after we generate the instances on the grid each of these points is going to be having an instance by itself which is going to be a curve we need to make uh, blender realize that the curves are going to be represented as individual objects and not just as a uh, point instance but instead that those instances through this node realize instances I'm not uh, uh, I'm not sure if this name is going to stay but it's basically telling blender hey this mesh can receive attributes or parameters uh, because they are going to be real and then we r repeat the positive positive trajectory for every instance this is what 
uh, creates the the approximation for before the smoothing before smoothing the line okay and then we get the position of the empty origin and represent it because from this point onward we don't have anything up until this point if you create all of this you're not going to get this this is far down in the tree already as you can see okay because first comes the generation of the points the location of those points then the property of those points then we have to kind of arrange it in a way that they know who's first and who's last then you have to clamp those values and do a lot of other math interesting math stuff so that's what Arian did after it took the original uh, position of the empty and now it's going to find the position until the grid emission as well so this is telling the let me see if I can show you let me go back to oh no no it's not possible unless I switch this off and then you can see so what Eric is doing right here is to take the object's initial position given by this empty and then telling telling uh, geometry nodes to find the difference between this this origin point I'm sorry this origin point which is a plane you can see it right there it's just a single plane it's going to locate this position to this posi position over here after that it's going to create a noise offset along the curve this is so that the missiles missiles or missiles however you want to call them <laughs> they are not linear as we saw before so we need to uh, get the position difference and add some noise in between those points so you can see that now another important aspect of this is what I wanted to tell you from the beginning it's the importance of this parameter on how to use the expand nodes in this case that were used to calculate how close or how far each of these missiles is so how far apart can the missile expands used to max so this is from max this is not the one that you're going to use this is to max this is the one that you're going to use so if I reduce this number to something like 50 you can see that there the noise it's really close the noise means that I'm going to be offsetting just like we saw before create the offset noise along the curve and this is using this parameter to calculate how far it's going to be that offset from each other so you can come here and you can see that this is labeled in a red node color this one is red it's labeled on yellow which means that it is a legacy node as well as this other one right here this is a legacy node as a matter of fact I should have also taken this color so whoops and legacy colors just means that this is going to be replaced in the near future by some other ver better version uh, this one I think it was another one legacy so just so you know that these things can potentially change in the future alright so let's continue so how far apart are the missiles and then it's labeled on red there are other node colors that I also tend to use which are green and these are for animations and safe parameters that means that you can play along with them and nothing is going to change everything else is just uh, labeled so you can get an idea of what is going on on the three I don't expect you to understand this right away uh, ourselves in the session with Erin did not and could not pick it up at the moment but that's why I'm doing a recap hopefully under under two hours I'm not going to take that long just kidding um, so how far apart can the missiles expand so you have the choice to use two max and then decide how far apart you want them since the art director came and he says you know what they're really close and, uh, everyone's going to notice that those missiles are really hitting the target let's open up to something to 100 so there you have it it's more uh, wide open space 
uh, then the director comes and makes another revision and then he says now let's go to 200 we want really really uh, the missile trails to go wild but let's give some more space to the airship so that's good that works or at least at some extent look at that it's fantastic and if you're really moving the camera, because as you can see the camera is stable right now, but if you really move this camera and you activate motion blur, this, oh my goodness, this really takes a new height. You already know I love buns. So yeah, that that's that. But then you say, Mr. Schiller, is there a way to control how far in the trajectory the missiles go? Like, I don't want them to end there. What if I want a longer trajectory? Well, you have two options. You can either move the the empty and therefore you're going to be moving the trajectory as well and it's going to be longer a longer distance from here to there which kind of favors everything and this empty by the way it's um, rigged you can attach it even to to this uh, general null that you can see right here it's called main cog center of gravity and from there on you can move the entire thing as one rig so it doesn't matter how you move the camera your uh, your uh, main focus is always going to be at the front let's say with this airship um what else let's continue airing creates the noise along the curve and then we represent the actual rocket trail and their positions and now we're going to create the rocket rocket mesh trail what a mouthful um, then Arian identified each, each curve with an integer number just because we needed to have a different kind of uh, materials and also because we needed to assign a different ID for the collections of the rockets that we were going to use. And it's a, it's a fortunate accident that the curve ends right here and makes this kind of a nifty like uh, fire hose trail before going into this section which is also created by this segment that we have right here and which is basically setting the smoke trail behind the rocket because up until this point everything that you see right here has been used only to create the curve give it an ID and set its path it has not been represented yes yet also, this entire section right here is going to represent the rocket uh, offset. And up here we have the section that represents just the rocket and the collection it's taking the meshes from. So let's continue to walk in here. And Erin captured the ID to expose it. This is another nifty thing that we we didn't know and someone in the chat came um i think it was uh i don't remember his name exactly i'm sorry i don't want to uh, forget anyone but there's due credit to one of the artists that was connected at the time within the session and then he said that you can expose parameters by taking the capture attribute taking the attribute and plugging it into an empty socket in the group output this is why you see factor here. This is not doing anything, but it's rather passing information so that we can see it on the, uh, they call it the spreadsheet. In here, you can see how the parameters, or in this case, the factor that comes from picking up the attributes on the transfer attribute, uh, we are in regarding to the vector, the index, and the points. What was the result? Because you cannot see it directly in the viewport unless you have it connected over here to the group output. Maybe you knew this, maybe you didn't know this, but that's how you can read all of these numbers um, as a property, visible property here in the spreadsheet, okay? Because otherwise you can start clicking everywhere and then you will not see um, the attributes that you're interested in. In this case, like we mentioned before, it was the vectors plus other points that we have right here. Uh, right here, point. So then we get a small offset to favor the rocket position, identify the curves, and in time, 
This in turn takes the empty position to add a rocket mesh at the end because we need to identify, hey, you know what? It started from here and is going to there, offset it by some some um, distance. And this is what it's using right here to determine. Okay, this is the end point. Offset the rocket up until this point over here. I'm not gonna do that because, like I already mentioned, we have already 30 minutes on on this. So yeah, then we need to orient correctly this rocket regarding the path trajectory. I don't want to say path because it's not really a path. It's it's a curve generated from this point with a noise all the way until the target's end. And then finally, the collection to pick up different rockets came from this collection that says rockets. You can right click on this and I'm going to assign it a, let's green color. Now you don't get this by default. This is on my theme on the Blender V theme, which is an actually a free theme. I'm going to be updating it so that you can see uh, geometry nodes and any other active window in a better way because everything else has been configured. In the Blender V theme you can see all of the editors that Blender has with its corresponding colors. Selections correspond to each one of the editors. Um, main selections and passive selections, etc. There is a long post thread on that. I'm going to be leaving it here on the video description if you want to read all the details why you may like to use that Blender V theme. Anyway, so let's um, continue. Smoke curve thickness. This is really important because this defines how thick the smoke trail is. And I'm going to show it to you using two min because it says use two min. So this is 0 0.57 copy. I'm going to 0 0.12. See that? Now it's thinner. It's a thinner smoke trail. And then you can decide or you can define. You can even create different groups or different geometry nodes, variations. So you can have a, a better or much broader um, stylized uh, Eternal Circus. Ones having thicker lines and others having thinner lines. So let's go back to the original. Uh, size that it has. I like it like this and then let's represent and smooth the smoke curve thickness again We have a, a level 2 thickness and with a resolution of 8 and this is just so the curve appears smoothly So if I don't do that if I use one look at that. It's uh It's not giving enough resolution for the roundness. So setting it to 8 and probably down downsizing this to one is going to make it look rougher look at that we see one case there see that bam 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 it's too, it's too angular although there are people who like it this way in either case you can just put two and then this will put a level two subdivision to the curve then we finally uh, can assign the smoke material to the curve and again uh, you create your material first drag and drop it over here or just uh, shift a set material search set material and then you can just target the available materials that you have so that's nothing new there and finally this was connected to another expose factor in the materials attribute why is this necessary because let's go to the material attributes uh, when you are on the shader editor, and by the way, I'm not using this. I just left it here so that you can explore the options. This is how you pass parameters that you get from geometry nodes into the shader editor. And how do you pick attributes from the geometry nodes, positions, or anything you like onto the shader editor? Well, you use attributes. And from attributes, you're going to tell it to pick it up the attributes from the geometry, which in this case is the grid generating all these missiles. And then you're going to create a name for such attribute. In this case, we're going to be using index, and there's another attribute called P. And as you can see, out here, we have a, an output attribute index and an output attribute called P, which are this. And 
Arian set up this amazing uh, smoke trail, just like I mentioned before. Let me see if I can find it quickly here. Right here. So this is why he created what I was telling you about before, because he wanted to find out, uh, or rather assign all of the curves a smoke trail, a realistic smoke trail. Anyway, so here we have it and he assigned it, all of that and created it. So that was amazing to see. Again, Blender was crashing like you have no idea until until uh, we decided just not to go to that route um, because like I have reported at the beginning, it's a bug. So this was left there. Again, you can explore it. Again, this was assigned to a principal volume and everything is there. Uh, you can see and check and explore that but the important takeaway on this is that you can create shift a in the G uh, in the shader nodes I'm sorry the shader editor shift a attribute and then you will get this and from there you can expose the parameter that you're interested in so the the correct work order is that you first expose your attribute here and then you can come up over here so obviously to pick it up you type it there and you will pick it up but my setup was really simple I only generated a noise texture and clamp it just a little bit with color ramp there's uh, a lot of ways to do that I do it with the color ramp more visual and then the smoke intensity that you can assign to this as well so let's go back to the 3d viewport and let's finish this we have almost 40 minutes I'm sorry I'm really sorry but if you're following along thank you so much please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share this version of the video again you can read all of the notes that you have right here and you can change some of the things that are labeled to be changed and well everything else is uh, explained here again I know Erin will kill me for this because I tried to comment as best as I could following the the session that everyone had with him uh, in discord by the way just join his channel because there are a lot of amazing artists on his discord as well that are able to help you much better than I can uh, regarding math regarding positions regarding attributes because they do this uh, like a walk in the park every day. This is just um, So easy for them to do anyway, so I'm not going to be commenting anything else You can just open all of this. Oh, this is the last thing that I wanted to show you because this is really important right under the set noise while the trail progresses each frame you're going to find two notes labeled set frame number to fade smoke trail from min max and then start from mix max frames to the last. So what does this mean? Right now, if you play back this animation, it's going to only play back for 100 frames. After 100 frames, all the missiles just leave the uh, 3D environment. There are no mom there are no more missiles. Missiles. What if you want to extend this all the way up until uh, frame 500 easy you will come here start from min max frames to last so the first frame frame 1 the last frame 100 we're going to switch this to frame 500 and from there on the progress of the missiles from the origin I'm sorry from this end of point to the origin okay this is something I also asked um, Aaron if it was possible to do. What if the art director wants a lot of um, places where they want to generate the missiles and then come to a single point instead of right now as it is coming from one single point all the way to a distribute grid. So the time was very short. It was uh, done on his uh, volunteer work if we can say it so. But you can explore that option with your own understanding of everything that we have set right here because you can reverse the direction of these curves by using other attributes that we have already defined so that that can be done as well I'm not going to be doing it right now because I've already taken 40 minutes of your time so thank you so much for being patient so again this is the way that you're going to switch your your um, 
duration. This is the duration of the effect. So let's go past 100. But Mr. Schiller, what happened? You you said that this was going to be lasting all this time, and that we can see all the all the things that were going to last for 500 frames. What happened? So what happens is that you have a limitation to set the frame number to fade the smoke and trail from this min and max value. This is the min value, this is the max value. Arendelle set a time threshold from frame 90 to frame 100, 10 frames, so that the smoke ends. So when you get to frame 90, the smoke trail starts to be cut all the way until frame 100, and then it disappears. So the only thing that we need to do is to set the new time, since we wanted all of these smoke trails to last up until frame 500. Let's switch that. The maximum frame is 500, and the minimum, uh, uh, the minimum frame where it's going to start fading that smoke, it's going to happen at frame 400 because I said so. So from frame 400 up until frame fi frame 500, you're going to see that the smoke will start to fade away until finally it's no more. Now there's one more thing that we need to do here. Mr. Schiller, all of the rockets disappeared. What happened? What happens is that in the rockets collection, let's make them visible just for a second clicking here. If you don't have this thing, you can click all of this right here. Uh, switch them on. You can select the cylinder, which we're going to uh, leave as it is. And then you can see that the strength for a displace modifier that we have put here uh, makes the destruction of the missiles possible. What that means is that you only have to come here into the timeline, and then you will see that it's got two frames, two keyframes. Right now, we set the new time to be 500, and these things explode at frame 95. And as you can see right there, there are no more because this is animated right here on the displace modifier at uh, the cylinder which is under the rockets collection. So what we want to do is to take all of that and move it all the way over here so that when the rocket trails are advancing, then they're going to be disintegrated in here. But then you can also see that the rockets do not appear after frame 100 and this is due because on the col rockets collection we have the cylinder 01 being destroyed by a build modifier okay so it's very easy to to help our explosions or rather uh, the missile the missile disintegration by coming here into the start frame and then the length it says that it's going to start at frame 95 and then it's going to be continued and destroyed all the way until frame 100, which is 5 frames of length. So what we need to do is to tell Blender to destroy the, miss the missile right here on 495. 495, okay. And let's do the same for the other one that we have right here on frame 495. You're going to destroy all the missiles. So that way, the missiles will remain until we um, reach frame 500. But what happens with the trails? We need the trails to continue to um, last until frame 500. So let's go to the geometry nodes again, and we're going to readjust this. So from frame 1 to frame 100, you can see it right here. Start from main max frames to last. We're going to last for 500 frames. That's the period of time that it's going to take from this point all the way until this point. And this is how much it's going to last, but you can change the direction by switching this um, node, okay? So, as you can see, it's going through the noise, so you can read and see the entire noise. Okay, I'm just doing that so you can um, understand the difference between moving the position and lasting through the animation. So we're going to last from frame 1 to 500 and then the frame number to fade the smoke trail from min max. From min, this is from min right here, from max, this is from max. So we're going to fade the smoke starting at frame 490 and ending at frame 500.
Okay, this is probably the easiest setup that you, you've seen. So there you have it. It's lasting for 500 frames. This pilot is really ace. He's uh, trying to escape. Let me maximize this. He's trying to escape the Itanul Circus uh, missiles. Let me get this out of the way. This out of the way. And then you can see it's it's mind blowing. It's uh, <laughs> this evasion maneuvers. It's just whoops. Uh, that missile that you see back there. It's the collection that is visible. You don't need the visible collections. You can put anything, any kind of rocket or remodel them if you want a real close up for the missiles. I just uh, thought it was a good idea to to set them on this color. Erin basically did this <laughs> immediately. I don't think it's captured though. Uh, let me see if it's captured. Yeah, he modeled it right there on the viewport. Look at that. He's just a pro. <laughs> Fantastic. So let's go back to the to the scene, and then uh, we have it right here. So yeah, now we can shake the camera. We can create uh, color distortion, RGB displacements, anything you want, and everything is just there. Yeah, Mr. Schiller, but. You're forgetting the most important and iconic part of the Itano Circus, and that is that the explosions look at look like a half moon, and it is not there. Well, this again is just the basis so that you can see as a proof of concept that such things can be created in Blender. And I decided to publish this under Arian's permission because there were no actual. Um, uh, tutorials about this in Modo or in Houdini. I did not and could not find it, although it's most likely that most studios in Japan have already produced this kind of effect using Houdini and much better since Houdini it's made entirely to create things procedurally. But anyways, this has been Pierre Schiller. I, I am a 3D animator and BFX compositor. I have been working in Blender as a Blender instructor for over four years now. It has been a really good pleasure to show you this production case in which you can see the use of geometry nodes. Now, of course, this can also be done manually, but the thing here was just to make an interesting case approach to how you can handle this kind of animations and this kind of uh, compositions in your render viewport look at that you don't even need to wait that much to see that the field and the explosions and the trails everything is just there if you would like to get this file for educational purposes only then this file is available on my patreon every time you support my patreon it gives me the opportunity to extend and expand the kind of things that uh, other softwares create except that we're going to always use blender hey you know what you should try blender Try Blender. Blender is powerful and beyond industry compatible. And I will see you in the next video.